Well, here we are, uh, episode 8 of Anarchist Parenting Child Custody. And today I'm here in wonderful Portside, Arizona. Just adjacent to I-10. And today's episode, we're going to talk about what, why Bella is so different than other children. You know, the first thing is that, you know, her mother and I, when we first met, um, we met on like uh, the 17th or the 18th of uh, February, 2006, and uh, we had Bella on the 22nd of December. So, you know, she was conceived within the first, you know, 30, 60 days of us meeting. So, I don't know, that seems to me pretty special. Because um, I've never had an experience like that before. I mean, I was with my wife for nine years and we never conceived a child. But, uh, and while Lori was pregnant, we, we came to some understandings. We, we came to an understanding and we were talking about, you know, the sovereign person and not going out and getting a, uh, a birth certificate because, you know, and this is the, the belief I was trying to instill in her that, um, Bella is not property of the state. She doesn't need a birth certificate because only property of the state has uh, a birth certificate. Uh, we weren't going to go get a social security number for her and start using her as a monetary instrument in our taxes or anything. We weren't going to vaccinate her. We weren't going to... We were going to have a home birth. And uh, we weren't going to have any prenatal care. Because most of it is uh, unnecessary. So, we came to all these agreements. And we... Uh, when she was born in the same bed that she was conceived in nine months later um, we did not go out and get a birth certificate we created a birth record which myself the father the mother signed and Sean McLaughlin who was our uh, witness to the to the event and we all sign that and that is a legal document so she refuses to give me this document she still has this document and refuses to give me a copy of it so um, I'm not quite sure what to do when I'm dealing with status that insist that my daughter is not my daughter because I don't have a birth certificate. Well, that's not true. And in fact, in the court system for Lori, because Lori, while we were married, she was married, I should say, she was married the entire time we were cohabitating. So, you know, according to the laws of, of uh, uh, Ohio the uh, husband is the uh, legal father of any child conceived during that marriage so in order for Lori to get a divorce in 2009 I agreed to a DNA test so she could prove that uh, the child was not her uh, husband's 
so she could get the marriage annulled without any children. Well, she made an agreement that she wasn't, if I did that test, I, she, she made an agreement with me that she was not going to go out and get a birth certificate. And what did she do right after she got divorced? Well, she ran out and she got a birth certificate. And she didn't even have the wear for all to make it a binding document by putting my name as the father. The father is unknown. Um, I think she did this on purpose, so I wouldn't have any paternal rights. So, what what is a what what am I to do? I mean, I'm gonna if I'm gonna go fight these statists in their status courts, I have to take my I, I have to. I, this is just totally contrary to what uh, was supposed to happen. You know, I. Uh, and I don't understand how the state is going to restore uh, my child's sovereignty. I mean, that's the whole problem. That's, that's why I don't want to go fight with the freaking uh, state, because they have no authority in the matter. Um, no authority whatsoever. So... I mean, until you have to go out and get a permit to have a kid, um, I don't think the freaking state has any authority in procreation. I don't think they have any business in it. That sounds like a, uh, uh, a divine function that the, the state is trying to meddle with. It is totally abhorrent to my philosophical and religious beliefs. And it didn't help my oldest daughter. I mean, this is another reason why I did this. I mean, most people don't know that my oldest daughter, she was born in 1988. I, or, I'm sorry, 1987. And uh, she was murdered in... Uh, 1997. Not, I'm sorry, 1993. 97 is when I got out of the Navy. Um, so, and I had the same kind of situation with her mother. She went out and cheated on me, put the guy's name that she was cheating with on the birth certificate, falsified that document, so, it wasn't until a month before Katie's death that I finally got her um, birth certificate uh, uh, figured out, and I actually started having some paternal rights. And, you know, she was dead 30 days, not even 30 days later. I never even got to make my first child support payment. She, before that even happened but uh, you know and that's why Bella is so special because my first born child was state property and the state was supposed to be looking after her and to me they totally failed her and they failed me they never found the murderer. Um, I can't even get redress from my former employer, the United States Navy, because I was having, uh, you know, the, uh, serious mental issues and, you know, PTSD, uh, depression, which I was under treatment for before I got out of the Navy. And it's just really interesting because you know, I, I just trying to correct those mistakes. 
that I made with my oldest daughter. That birth certificate didn't do a thing for me. It doesn't mean anything. And, um, but, you know, it's totally hamstring in my, my efforts. And not only that, but, you know, Lori just has, you know, she has control care and custody. And since there is no father of record, she doesn't have to file for any custody or contend with any custody. And, but yes, she wants me to provide support. She wants me to pay support on a regular basis, but she does not have any desire to share custody. And I can't give her any additional support unless she gives me these documents so I can give her money. So, I, yeah, I'm really not sure what to do with her, how to motivate her into uh, doing what's right. I don't know. So, thank you very much. This is Chris McCraw. I'm Mercury. Out for the day.